So welcome back to the channel and welcome to my kitchen. Uh, for uh, a difference, I thought let's sit in the kitchen for once. And there is another reason why I am sitting here. Because in this video, I want to show you how I process my raw files to JPEGs and how it looked and what the end result was. And I especially want to show you how my style changed over the past 10, 15 years, where I was a really, really, uh, uh, yeah, over editing my images back then to real soft images close to reality that I'm doing right now. And I also want to show you some of my most crazy edits uh, in yeah, history. So there are a couple of real old ones and some new ones. And I'll show you some links to videos that I already made where you can see how I process these videos. And because I was uh, showing you how to process or how to cook up those images, I thought, let's go sit in the kitchen uh, where you are supposed to cook stuff up. So uh, let's dive into this video and let me show you some of those extreme crazy edits that I have done. So let's first look at some images from uh, about 10 years ago. Uh, this is from Botswana. And you can see uh, I really over edited this image back then. Uh, the sky looks like crap. There's a lot of noise in the image back then. Um, look over here, you know, I really uh, darkened the sky, but I forgot those spots here on the horizon. I never paid attention to that. It's a crap image after all, you know, uh, I wouldn't even take this image right now if I had to uh, choose again. Uh, I wanted to walk a little bit closer to the water here, but there were some crocodiles laying there. So that's why I never dared to walk closer to the water's edge. But just look at it. This is the file uh, that I edited 10 years ago. And this was the raw file. And you see all those, there's nothing of these white lines around there. It's just all done by myself in editing. And that's what you have to be careful for. Don't over edit your images. You know, sometimes it helps to just walk away, leave your edits alone and look at it again the next day. Because if you're into an image, you can really, really go crazy on them. Here's another one of those images from Botswana. And you can see again, it, the image isn't even in focus. And I just try to make the best of it. And in, if I would have taken a shot like this today, I wouldn't even process it. It just goes straight into the bin and it's gone. So here again, this is the original file. And this is the edited version from uh, about uh, 10 years ago. Well, this is another uh, image from that same trip. Uh, this is a shot close to Cape Town. And I really uh, liked this image, but we weren't able to go there uh, with some nice light. So uh, as you can see in this image, I just made the light up. You know, I just brightened up all this foreground here and those rocks. And I made the sky look real moody on the right side. And um, there's, there's this, this glow from a sunset um, at that point, which, which really is really enhanced. You can see that there is a little bit of color in here in the original raw file, but there's, there's nothing like that. And in today's uh, situations, I would never edit an image like this. And you know why, you know, the sun is behind I think this rock. So this space can never be brighter than this space. It's impossible. There's no direct light over here. And it's just an editing mistake that I made back then, uh, which shows that you can really over edit your images. So um, yeah, there's another one here. If you look at it, you see this giant halo around the sun here, which actually looks like crap you know it doesn't look like anything so but this was one of my all-time favorite images so i think last year i re-edited this image with my current style and you can see that i went for a much different approach um, the sun is much more suited in the environment here so i'm really happy with this shot but this is just real over edited i just pulled up those those blacks way too much. You can see it also here on this white line on the horizon, which really doesn't look as aesthetic uh, as it should be. So I'm really happy with this, uh, this new edit. You can see the transition over here looks far more natural than in the uh, edit from 10 years ago. So this is a good image to show um, that my uh, image, uh, my, my editing style really changed over the years. Um, 
this is a, a, quite a recent image. So this is the raw file of one of my favorite shots of this year, 2024. And this is the final result. And you can see that I don't do much. I didn't change much on this image. Uh, I just enhanced the colors a little bit, brightened uh, the darks a little bit, and uh, overall created a little bit more contrast through the image. And that's it. I don't do much more than that. And it's also because uh, these days, I search for these perfect light conditions much more than 10 years ago. Then I shot images in the middle of the day and I started to uh, approach the editing like I shot them during sunrise, which just isn't possible. So that's why I always say just be on time, be at the right spot at the right place. That's 80% of a nice image. So really happy with this shot, not much done with the editing on this one. Uh, if you look at this also, a real, real special moment uh, a couple of months ago, right close to my house here, about 10, 15 minutes away from my house. And this is the raw file. But if you look at it, this is the uh, final result edit. And you can see that I brightened it up a little bit to create this, uh, yeah, th this, this nice atmosphere to it, uh, to this tranquil atmosphere. And I did clone away a little piece here in the right bottom. You can see there is a little bush here in the right bottom, which I cloned away in the, the final result. But I didn't do much to this edit. It is what it is uh, at this point, except I made it a little bit brighter. Uh, this edit also, you know, this looks like a crazy image, uh, but this is just fog lit up with the sun. You can see a little bit uh, through the uh, canopy in the background that the sun is uh, coming through there. You can see it right up here. Um, but overall, this is just it. So the only thing I did was enhance those colors. And this is eventually what I made of it with just a two or three minute edit. And you see, I made it a one by one. I thought that suited uh, the composition much better. And I think I, yeah, I think I cloned away that little part in the top here this section up here, that's what I uh, cloned away. But this, this is just a simple two, three minute edit, uh, nothing more than that. Uh, this image also, look at this real foggy atmosphere. So how I approach this one, and there's actually a video of how I process this image file. So if you wanna see that, go up here and you can see the video. But I really dehazed this image uh, very much and I made it much bluer than the actual conditions were here. So this is my final edit of this image. Um, you can see that there's, you can't even see anything in the original file, but it's all coming back in the edited file due to the dehazing and turning the image a little bit more blue, making it more winter colors. So it's all frost on those uh, grasses in the foreground and on the, the leaves of that tree, the branches. There are no leaves on it, of course, but uh, it shows that you can take your image to a whole different uh, perspective by changing the, the color of the image or the warmth of the image. So in this case, I went for a much colder uh, shot. So this is one of the uh, crazy edits that I wanted to show you from uh, same trip, Botswana, Namibia, 2015. And by then I shot this image, but I didn't pay enough attention in the field uh, to my composition because uh, I really like this image, but it's still crap. It's way too hard in the background, those lines. I should have shot it with a much lower aperture. But if you look at the original RAW file, there is actually a tree. Let me show you here in this image. And I just totally missed that. And probably if I went a step to the right, I would have been able to put this tree in front of this small one. And this one would have been on top of those trees over here. And it would look much, much better. But it just wasn't the case. And uh, I thought that really ruined my image. So what I did, I just cloned away the complete tree in the background over here. So just look at it. This is the raw, this is the raw file. And this was my final edit, raw file, final edit. No, and I spent ages in deleting that tree properly and I'm actually quite satisfied with the result. Uh, but still, I would love to go back to the dead flare ones and take another chance of it because I think there is much more possible with uh, these images. Um, this is uh, 
a nice uh, image to show you. This is actually not far off from the original RAW file. This was an experiment. This is a high-res image with a 10-stop ND filter in front of the camera. I'll put a link up to the video up here if you want to see it. And this is actually, uh, the high-res mode takes eight images that it combines. And this is eight images from 60 seconds. So it almost took 10 minutes. And um, this is straight out of camera, except for one thing. And let me show you the raw file of this image. You can see it here. There's nothing changed except for this flag up here, which I really, really, really didn't like. So let me show you the next image. And in this image, I didn't clone something away, but I actually added something to the image. And I don't do this much, but uh, sometimes I just uh, try, to, try to do it to save an image. It just makes it a little bit better. But let me show you, this is the, the final result edit of this image. And it was a split second moment where I noticed this deer under the tree. And in those split seconds, you often don't pay enough attention to your composition. And just pay attention here to the right side of this tree uh, because this is the raw file. And you can see I put this tree way too much on the side of the image. And I really, really didn't like that. I warmed this image up uh, quite a bit, uh, actually. And um, what this image uh, yeah, really shows is that you can still save an image like this because I really didn't like it with this cut off tree. I, I just wanted it like this, a free image, which is just much better if you ask me. So let me quickly show you how I did it because it's actually quite easy. If you go to Photoshop uh, and you um, get the tool up here where you can uh, change the aspect ratio. And if you select, for example, 16 by nine and just pull a little bit wider here on the side so you uh, go over the edge of the image and then just push this generative fill here. And I don't even put something in there I we'll just have to wait a couple of seconds here for Photoshop to analyze the image, to process it. And then we're gonna see the final result that, that Photoshop has cooked up here in this shot. So just look at this, you know, isn't that <laughs> magic? You know, it just looks really nice. And you can choose up here. There are a couple of different uh, uh, styles that it takes, but I think this one is actually pretty nice. You can see there is some color difference here um, on the bottom. And I think I uh, did this, uh, I'm doing this now to the raw file, but I think I, when I did this in processing, I did it to the final edit that I made and I made that a little bit wider. And then I didn't have this uh, uh, color difference in the bottom, but just look at how easy you can make an image just a little bit uh, wider. This is actually the only image that I did it uh, to, uh, that I ever used in, uh, uh, in my YouTube videos. Uh, I recently did the same with this particular image, but I had to give a lecture and all those uh, televisions or screens and lectures are all 16 by nine. And this shot is a four by three and that leaves some very big dark uh, edges next to your image that I just don't really like. So I tried it with this image, pulled it a little bit wider to the left, a little bit wider to the right. And um, this is the raw file, by the way. So you can see I really enhanced those whites in the back. There are a lot more contrast in this image. Uh, but I just pulled it a little bit wider with the same technique in Photoshop. And look at it here. I can't even see where the transition was in this image. So this, this technique just works flawlessly. It's just amazing. And I, I would never print this image because I'd, if you zoom in closely, uh, then you can see that the quality difference here, you see here, there's no detail here, but there is detail here. And on a big screen during a lecture, you can't see this, but you can only see this uh, on the screen here. So I would never print this image. Um, it's the same here on this side. You see no detail and detail here on this side. So I wouldn't print this, but it is possible to do something with an image uh, like this. Uh, and especially for those lectures, uh, I like to make them a little bit bigger so they fill the screen when I talk about them uh, to the people. Um, for example, this image, I also added something because if you look at the reflection in the bottom here, um, you can see there wasn't even a reflection in <laughs> that water at that moment. Just look at it right here and right here. 
there is absolute no reflection. The whole reflection is a flipped image turned upside down. And uh, this is a technique I was here with my friend Moises and he explained to me how he processed that, how we did that. And it was a little experiment for me to see if I could do it, you know, I just didn't know for sure if I was uh, able to do it. So uh, he gave me some instructions on how to do this. And there is a video up here uh, where I explained how I did this process. And it's the same with this image. The reflection of the buildings here in the water wasn't there. There was absolutely no reflection. It's just a reflection that I added in Photoshop. Um, Actually, I don't even remember how I did it, so I would have to watch the video myself. Uh, but it, I took a lot of time and I don't even know if I really like this kind of photography. You know, it gives nice results, but I'm not satisfied with these images. It's not what I want to create, you know. So uh, this is for me over editing at the moment, but it was nice to do this experiment for once. So. Uh, yeah, if you want to see it, then check out the video and just here look at the raw file and the, or the, the finished or in the finished file. Completely different image. So this image, uh, I actually added two images together. So this is the final JPEG that you're looking at right now. But um, these are uh, two images and you can see here um, the road. One has the, the yellow lights, one has the red lights. Um, I first edited one of these images, uh, I think it's this one, uh, the, with the red lines. Then I copied everything to the other file in Lightroom. So they both looked exactly the same exposure-wise, so there was no difference. And then I went into Photoshop and I merged these two layers together to create this shot with both lanes in one single image. Uh, you can see a video up here, I'll put a link up here where you can see how I edited this image if you want to see uh, how that process uh, went from front to back. Um, but it, it gives a nice result and I was hoping to get this in one single uh, shot, but there just wasn't enough traffic on this road to get this shot in one single image. And here you can see that uh, changing colors and dehazing an image really works sometimes. So I really dehazed this shot of the eyes and that made it a lot colder creating this image. So you get a lot more contrast um, and the, the, the blue colors really suit that, that icy mood to this image. So uh, color wise, temp color temperature can really create a different feeling to images. Um, this is another image that uh, I'm actually really happy with. I had it on my business card for a while. I used it in lectures last year. Uh, but this is the uh, original raw file and this is my final edit. And you can see that it's a totally different image due to the color temperature uh, of the image. So I really made it a lot warmer uh, than the original file, uh, which yeah, really gave it that, that punch that I was looking for. And I remember that I darkened all those shadows here in the foreground. I really painted them with a brush and darkened them all a little bit. And all those light spots, and uh, you can see it in the, uh, the raw file, they are here, the light spots are here, but they are not as visible. So I really painted over them carefully and then brightened them up a little bit uh, to create this uh, final result. And one last thing that I did, I, you can see the light rays are here in the raw file, but uh, I pulled up, uh, I think it was a linear gradient up here and um, I really dehazed that a little bit and that enhanced those uh, and brightened it up a little bit. So these light rays were enhanced in this particular image. Um, that's, that's how I uh, processed uh, this particular image back then. So this is another one um, where you can see that a col changing colors really changes the, the atmosphere of an image. Because we were a little bit late for these cherry blossoms uh, to photograph them. The, the best of the colors were already gone because this is actually the raw file of this image. And you can see that all those uh, leaves already turned almost white. And the only thing I did here was change the color temperature on the top side of the image. I just selected these uh, these leaves and let me show you in Lightroom. I think I have Lightroom open here. Um, let's go to this file and I can show you that. Uh, let's do a quick basic edit here of this file. Just brightening it up, brightening it up a little bit. Um, 
you can see if I get a linear gradient over here and I pull it down, there's a lot of things going on at the same time on this computer, Photoshop, uh, Lightroom, and I'm recording this session in the background, so uh, the computer doesn't really like that usually. Uh, if you now push the Alt key on your keypad, uh, you can intersect this with a color range. And if I just select those whites up here, you can see that Lightroom does a real awesome job with selecting all those uh, white leaves. And the only thing you have to do here is just change the colors of these leaves to a more magenta color to create the, the style that I made in uh, this image. So it's, it's totally different than, uh, than it was. And fun thing is that everyone that was there, because in that week after this, I saw a lot of uh, edits from uh, people that were there. Uh, online and they all did <laughs> exactly the same uh, as I did. So um, you can see if I change the aspect ratio, it looks a lot more like that uh, finished raw file. But this was a file that, uh, let's have a look at it, this one really, really took a lot of editing, over editing, spending too much time on them. And these days I know when I have to do so much time on an image, uh, I'm already thinking to myself, is this worth it? Is this image worth showing to the world? Because I will never ever print or sell this image because I, I know that it's not the reality uh, to me. Um, this image is very close to reality actually. This is my final edit of this uh, image. It's actually a small panorama. And uh, let me show you this. These are the two uh, files little fly flying by here. Uh, these are the two files of the panorama that I shot and I combined those together to this uh, uh, raw file, panoramic raw file. And the only thing I did was enhance the colors a little bit, make it a little bit warmer, but you can see that the whole mood, the atmosphere is already here. And this is the final edit, which isn't much different than this shot, but just a little bit uh, on the highlights saturation, a little bit more contrast, a little bit more warmer tones in the image, and you can get uh, some amazing conditions uh, like this. Uh, this is a, an image that you can see up here. I made a whole video on how I processed and edited this image, so I'm not going into the details here right now, but um, it does uh, show you uh, how I can merge layers together to get an HDR image. So. Um, this image are, is seven images combined together. So if you look over here, this is shot number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And all those layers together created this particular uh, image. So uh, I do that because the, the sky was way too bright. And you can see in, in these images, it's a choice if I want the foreground uh, to be, yeah, I could have a good exposure, the, uh, the sky is overexposed. So if I go back and I stop to where the point where the sky is not overexposed, and I think it's about this shot here, you can see that the foreground is underexposed way, way too much. It's way too dark. You lose detail, you get a lot of noise. Just look at the amount of noise uh, in this dark section here, especially this color noise. And you can avoid that all by making a bracket of all these exposures and then aligning them in uh, uh, Lightroom and merging them to one HDR shot, um, which is this final result. So that is the last image uh, of this video. And uh, just check out these uh, videos that I've linked up here during the video. Um, I'll put some links in the descriptions also to these, uh, to these specific videos uh, that you can watch how I did that, how I processed that. Uh, there's a lot of demand recently for uh, editing tutorials. I made one last week, but it was the, the least viewed video in over a year. So I'm, I'm really asking myself, uh, do you want more editing videos or not? Uh, just leave it in the comments here. Let me know what you think of a video like this, where I show you a little bit of 
uh, how I cook in my kitchen. Uh, and I just hope you liked it. So if you did like this video, uh, if it gave you some inspiration or let me know it in the comments and please push that thumbs up button. It will massively help this channel to grow. And there's also a subscribe button underneath here. If you didn't already, please consider subscribing to the channel. Uh, weekly new videos, mostly on location, landscape photography. Uh, I live in the Netherlands, so a lot of uh, yeah, the nature here in the Netherlands. I love foggy, moody, atmospheric mornings and I have a lot of them here. And I have a lot of those videos in stock at the moment with some of my favorite conditions. And I think some of my favorite images coming in a couple of weeks because uh, I just came back yesterday from a shoot that was absolutely insane. So uh, yeah, I, I hope all that stuff worked out. I think it does, but uh, you will see it in a couple of weeks. So um, yeah, please hope to see you on the next one. And uh, thanks for watching now. Bye bye.